AQA, A-level physics, uh, stable and unstable nuclei. And this is the bit of the specification we're going to be having a look at now. So what holds the nucleus together? Uh, and the answer is superglue. Uh, why do we need superglue to hold it together? Well, we've got protons very, very close to each other. Later on, when you do electric fields, you'll be able to work out the repulsive force between these protons, and it is massive. If you've got two protons next to each other, the repulsive force is about 57 newtons uh, between these two tiny, tiny, tiny little protons, and that is massive. So we need another force to hold them together. Uh, gravity wouldn't be enough. It, we need some other attractive force and that force is called the the strong nuclear force uh, and look at the title the strong it's very strong and it's nuclear it's inside the nucleus it acts on protons and neutrons later on we're going to talk about quarks which is what protons and neutrons are made of and it actually acts between quarks. Uh, so acts on protons and neutrons uh, at short range. Now, it, it has a very short range. So pr these protons and neutrons only attract the ones next to them. So the force doesn't extend very far, even within the nucleus. So um, the way I imagine it, imagine you've got two magnets which are repelling each other which are covered in Velcro and the Velcro is holding them together, but the Velcro is only going to act on the, the magnet next to it. And that's the strong nuclear force. You should be familiar with this graph. Looking at the graph, the force is attractive uh, up to about three femtometers, 10 to the minus 15, three femtometers uh, at less than about one femtometer, well, it's a maximum at about one femtometer, uh, less than that, it starts becoming very, very repulsive. So you can't push the two magnets any closer together. Be familiar with that graph. So uh, short range, so that nucleons only attract their nearest neighbors. Uh, we actually know that because we know that all of the nuclei have the same density. Uh, at very short range, it becomes repulsive. Um, now, larger nuclei need a bigger ratio of neutrons to protons. If you look at the, the um, nucleon number of very, very big nuclei, big atoms, you'll see that you need more and more and more superglue to hold them together because there's so many protons repelling each other. Alpha, beta and gamma radiation, I'm not going to talk about the properties, the range in air, penetrating power, uh, what they are, because uh, it's GCSE. Uh, have a look at my GCSE videos if you need to revise that. You should remember it from GCSE. Uh, now, why are most isotopes unstable? Um, consider carbon-14 very important for you might have heard of carbon dating so carbon 14 is unstable uh, and looking at it we know that carbon 12 is stable so carbon 14 it's probably unstable it's probably got too many neutrons okay certainly got an awful lot of neutrons so what happens is that one of the neutrons uh, changes into a proton and we also get a beta minus, uh, an electron, and we also get this thing called an anti-neutrino, which I'll talk about in a bit. So uh, this particular isotope of carbon has got too many neutrons and it decays. A neutron changes into a proton. So the mass number, the nucleon number, stays the same because you've lost a neutron, but you've gained a proton. Uh, however, the atomic number, the proton number, goes up by one because you've gained a proton. The proton is positive, 
uh, we get this electron produced as well so charge is conserved uh, and we also get this thing called an antineutrino now neutrinos are uh, well an antineutrino is a tiny little piece of antimatter because we are creating a particle We'll talk more about this in a video later on. If we create a particle, we have to create an antiparticle as well. If we are creating matter, we have to create a little piece of antimatter. Uh, so uh, a, a neutrino is uh, neutral. It's a tiny, neutral, very fast moving particle. Uh, how was it discovered? Well, before it was actually detected, this guy here, Wolfgang Pauli. When we look at beta decay, we can work out how much energy should be released. But what was happening is that the amount of energy that we observed was less than what was predicted. And Wolfgang Pauli suggested that there must be a third particle involved, uh, of almost undetectable third particle, which was getting some of the missing energy. So Wolfgang Pauli suggested that these particles called neutrinos existed. As a particle, the electron is being created. We must also create an antiparticle, which is the, in this case, a tiny piece of antimatter. Uh, if we created a, a positron, then we would create a neutrino. Yeah, so we'll talk about creation later. Now, uh, alpha decay. Very large nuclei are unstable. If nuclei are just too big, there's a, a model of nuclei called the water drop model. And when it rains, you don't tend to see very, very big water drops. Why? Because of surface tension and other reasons, they just split up into little ones. Okay, so big nuclei are unstable. There's only 92 stable isotopes. Why? Because anything bigger than that would be unstable. Now, one way that a large nuclei can become more stable is by losing a little bit of mass uh, by chucking out two protons and two neutrons. This little, very little stable cluster of two protons and two neutrons, which is a helium nucleus, uh, and we call it an alpha particle. And if the nucleus, the big nucleus, chucks that out, the big nucleus becomes more stable. As it's a helium nucleus, uh, the, the daughter nucleus will have four less nucleons and it will have two less protons. So, you should be able to do this. Complete these two decay equations. And the question at the bottom, uh, and have a go at them, pen, paper, calculator, and the answer is, there you go, should be pretty straightforward.